Victorine. Good to see you. I'm so grateful to be here today, literally surrounded by the best and the brightest in the Italian tech scene. Is that true? Yeah. Founders and angel investors, I guess giants of industry and rising stars of AI, tech geniuses and trailblazer entrepreneurs. When I see you all, I think Italy has got talent and it gathers here at the Italian Tech Week. So I would like to begin with one of the stories that you've heard here in Turin. The year was 2007. Two high school friends were huddled together in a garage in Milan. They had just enough gear to code and an idea they were sure could break through. For the next three years, they traveled around Italy to find someone, anyone, who'd finance their project. But the answer was always the same. Too young, too bold, too risky. And so in 2010, they left for San Francisco. In just two weeks, they found, found their first investors. The idea became one of the largest marketplaces for software in the world. And just a few months ago, their company, Kong, appeared on the massive screens of Times Square in New York when it reached a valuation of $2 billion. And I chose this story because it shows the incredible talent we have here in Italy and Europe, but incredible talent is not enough. You also need an environment that allows you to thrive. To be sure, many things have changed and improved since 2010. Venture capital in Italy has increased by over 600% in a decade. But I know that the number of unicorns is still too small and one third of them end up leaving our continent. This cannot stay like this. We cannot accept that our most talented may have to leave in order to thrive. You must find the right soil to flourish here in Europe. I want Europe to be worthy of you. Volume on un'Europa alla vostra altezza. I believe that my job is to create the best conditions for you to thrive right here on our continent. And this is the mission that drives me every day. I want the best of Europe to choose Europe. I want the future of AI to be made in Europe. But I know that there are far too many obstacles that stand in your way. And I would like to focus on three of them. The first and most obvious issue is the lack of funding. And here's the surprising truth. Europe does not lack capital. We are world champions in savings. European household savings reach almost 1.4 trillion euros compared with just over 800 billion in the United States. What we lack is risk capital and equity. Here in Europe, only 24% of households' financial wealth is invested in equity compared to 42% in the United States. So we must catch up, we must do it fast. And this is why, as a first step, we are creating a multi-billion scale-up Europe fund in partnership with private investors. The fund will make direct equity investment in strategic sectors like AI, quantum, clean tech, you name it. 
It will help growing companies like yours to close their funding gaps. But we also need a more structural solution. We need a deep and liquid capital market for Europe where you can find the capital you need without crossing an ocean. And this is the goal of our new savings and investment union. We're bringing the funding to you so that you can grow right here in Europe at home. The second obstacle you face is fragmentation of the single market. We live in an age where a line of code can cross the continent in a millisecond, while the startup behind it gets stuck at the border. You know it all too well. Too often it's easier to expand to another continent than across Europe. And it can be a nightmare to deal with 27 different bureaucracies and legislations. So, how can we fix it? Not by tearing down our legislation, agreed rules that give you certainty and predictability in your work, but by simplifying, making it easier for you to innovate. And this is why we are proposing a completely new approach to how innovative companies operate across Europe. We call it the 28th regime. Instead of tweaking 27 national systems to bring them closer, we are starting something completely new. Early next year, we will present new legislation to create one single and simple set of rules for the whole of the European Union. It will be the same in Turin, as in Lyon, in Barcelona, or Munich, in Sofia, or Bucharest, so that you can scale up across our member states much more easily than ever before. And my point is straightforward. A San Francisco startup can scale up easily across the United States. I want the same to be true here in Europe, because Europe is your home, and you must feel at home everywhere here in Europe. And the third topic I want to mention is the slow uptake of new technologies. This is precisely where business struggled 30 years ago when our companies were too slow to digitalize and go online. And so we lost ground to our main competitors. This time, Europe has a stronger starting point. Large companies are taking up AI at the same pace as their US peers, but smaller companies still lag behind. And other competitors like China and India are also running fast, so we must switch gears. We must speed up AI adoption across the board. And this is why next week we are presenting an apply AI strategy. It is based on a simple yet transformative principle, and that is AI first. I think this is worth an applaud. I heard the one and only person there. <laughs> that was symbolic for the uptake of AI. One person starting, the rest following. <laughs> and indeed, whenever a company or public office, what is AI first? When they face a new challenge, the first question must always be, how can AI help? Because when AI is in the loop, we reach better solutions, fast, reliable, affordable. Some of your startups are already pioneering it. Let me tell you, I'm a medical doctor by training. I'm amazed what AI can do in medicines. AI can assist doctors in diagnosing cancer much, much earlier or accelerate innovative medicines discovery. AI adoption needs to be widespread 
and we want to help speed it up. So we will create a European network of AI-powered advanced medical screening centers. This means top-class healthcare at all corners in Europe. And we will incentivize hospitals and pharma companies to take up innovative AI solutions because we all know AI can save lives and Europe must lead the way. We will promote the same AI first approach across our strategic industries from robotics to energy. But today I would like to focus on one sector in particular, and that's the automotive. This industry has a very special place in the story of Turin. In the years of the economic boom, Turin's car industry became a symbol across Italy, a symbol of progress and independence, a symbol of the future. Today, the industry is going through deep transformations. And one of these, of course, has to do with AI. Self-driving cars are already a reality in the United States and in China. Why isn't the same true here for Europe? Cars with AI can reduce congestion, connect remote neighborhoods to public transport, make our roads safer, AI first means safety first. So why don't we set up a network of European cities where the first self-driving cars can hit the road? A coalition of 60 Italian mayors have already expressed their interests. So my friends, let's make it happen. It is possible. Let's start immediately. And we are ready to support the automotive industry to develop innovative models that are made in Europe and are made for European streets. The automotive industry is a European pride. A new technology can save jobs and breathe new life into the sector. So the future of cars and the cars of the future must be produced here in Europe. That must be our goal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, too often I hear that Europe is late to the AI race. The skeptics say we will repeat the main mistakes of the past and another generation of European talents will be forced to leave. I strongly disagree, not only because the AI race is still warming up, but also because I've seen what Europeans can do when we set our eyes on a goal. Ten years ago, Europe was trailing behind the rest of the world in the race for computational power. We had only one supercomputer in the global top ten. But then the whole continent mobilized. We made supercomputers a top priority of my first mandate. And today, we have four supercomputers in the global top 10, two of them here in Italy. It shows you can drive the change. <laughs> and these supercomputers support our innovative startups to develop, to train, to deploy their next generation AI models. We have defied the skeptics and made Europe a global leader. And I guess this story of beating the odds may sound very familiar to you because it is also the story of many of you here. How many times have you been told that you were aiming too high. How many times have you thought that there was nothing else to try? And yet you're here. 
not because you never failed, but because you always found the strength to hit the road again. This is the spirit I feel in this room. And this is the spirit I want to feel in Europe. We will spare no effort to make Europe an AI continent. We will spare no effort to make you choose Europe because this is the great mission of our times. Thank you for inviting me and long live Europe. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Long live Europe. Thanks a lot. Thank you.